the world began, how God created it by hand, from mighty mountains to the raging sea, to every leaf on every single tree. It's in the holy book, just open up and take a look. In the land of Israel, there was a prophet named Jonah. A prophet taught other people about God and his love. Jonah told his friends and neighbors that God loved all people. And like God, Jonah tried to love all people and all creatures. This looks fresh today, Ophir. Yes, Jonah, the freshest you will ever meet or eat. You know how much I love eating fish. And I'll take a bag of peanuts. I see someone just as hungry as I am. <laughs> hungry, little dove? Here, take some of mine. We're all God's creatures. Sounds like someone's having an argument. This is my pot. No, it is mine. I saw it first. No, I did. I needed to carry water. I needed to carry raisins. Stop. Fighting never solves anything. Oh, besides, you're making me dizzy. My friends, please. God doesn't want you fighting. It upsets him. Now neither of you gets the pot. You were acting badly, just like someone from the city of Nineveh. Do you want God to think we act like the Ninevites? Ah, no. no! No, Jonah. Sorry, Jonah. The Ninevites are enemies of our people. I heard they stole a boat full of fish. Come on, come on. Yes, they are thieves. Yes, they are very bad people. See what happens when you fight. From now on, we will act like Israelites and not be bad like the Ninevites. So Jonah had a very important job. He taught people about God's laws. There came a day when God had an even bigger job for Jonah. Hello, Jonah. God, it's nice to hear your voice. I have an important job for you. What is it? I will do anything for you. There are some people who are not obeying my laws, Jonah. Look what they're doing. The people of Nineveh steal. They are not kind to each other. The children of Nineveh do not take care of older people. Others are lazy. And their king pretends not to see the problems. 
He only cares about eating all day and wearing fancy clothes. Yes, the Ninevites are bad. Send a flood or an earthquake to punish them. No, they are bad because they don't know about me. No one has taught them my laws. Jonah, your job is to go to Nineveh and tell them about me. Me? Go to Nineveh? I can't. Please give me some other job. Tell them of my love. But they are the enemies of my friends and neighbors. You must go, Jonah, right now. In 40 days, I will punish them for being bad. But if you're going to punish them, why should I go tell them about you at all? I don't understand. The Ninevites should be punished for being bad. But what if I tell them all about God and they change? Then maybe God won't punish them. I can't do something to help my enemies. Jonah was so confused, he asked his friends what he should do. You know, it's funny, Jonah. Usually, we come to you with questions. This time, I want to know what you think. How can I preach to the enemies of the Israelites? Simple. You can't. Oh, fear is right, Jonah. Don't go there. Don't tell them about God. You do have a problem, Jonah. If you don't preach to them, you disobey God. If you do preach to them, you'll disappoint all your friends. Nobody said being a prophet was easy, Ophir. <sighs> Wait, I know. I'll just hide from God. <laughs> sure, but where can you hide from God? Why, in your store, of course. I know my plan will work, Ophir. If I hide here for 40 days, then God will punish the Ninevites and no one will be mad at me. You call this a hiding place? Here, let me help you. Uh, Ophir, you don't have to go to that much trouble. Look, if you're going to hide from God, you've got to do it right. There. <laughs> and my shop's never been cleaner. Ophir, do you have any flour for baking biscuits? Yes, yes, in that basket. There. No! Wait! No! No! Now that everything's cleaned up, goodbye, Ophir. What? But Jonah, why are you leaving? I'm in the way, and I can't hide from God here in Israel. It's the first place he'd look for me. So where will you go? As far away from Nineveh as I can. I'll travel to the other side of the world to a city called Tarshish. God will never find me there. We'll miss you, Jonah. Thank you. I have a very lonely trip ahead of me because God will not be with me. So Jonah traveled as far away as he could to run away from God. First, he walked across dry deserts. Then he climbed high mountains. He finally came to the town of Joppa and found a ship that was going to sail for Tarshish. Captain, my name is Jonah. Can I sail with you to Tarshish? Sorry, Jonah. This ship only carries sailors and cargo. Besides, it's bad luck to bring a stranger on board, you know. The sailors on this ship weren't Israelites. They believed in many different gods. 
Ahoy, mate. Help me with this statue. Sir, why not? <clears throat> what? Please, Captain, I must sail away with you. Why? Because I am running away from God. Why? Because he gave me a job to do and I won't do it. I must hide so he won't find me. Ah, <gasps> did you see that? A dove. He flew right to Jonah. A dove is a sign of good luck, Captain. Very good luck. With Jonah on board, we will have safe passage. They're right. Welcome aboard, Jonah. So Jonah set sail across the vast sea, headed to faraway Tarshish. Jonah saw that the sailors didn't pray to God. They worshipped statues made of stone. Excuse me, what are you doing? Feeding the god of water. If he has a full stomach, he'll make the seas calm. But this isn't a god, <laughs> it's just a rock. My god is the real one. He created the sea, the sky, the animals, all of us, everything. One god created all that? <laughs> I don't think so, Jonah. See, this is the sun god, the god of the wind, the god of plenty. With so much in the world, you need a lot of gods. Yeah, no one god can rule over everything. <laughs> yes, God does. He is the one and only God. Well then, if he is so wonderful, why are you running away from him? He wants me to go to Nineveh and tell them about him. But they are the enemies of my people, and we'd be better off without them. I've never seen a storm like that. Me either. We're in trouble. Whoa! to their gods, but the storm just grew stronger. Someone has brought our ship bad luck. Very bad luck. We must find out who it is. Let's throw lots. Then we'll know who brought this storm. The captain and his crew, being superstitious, believe that pieces of wood and bone would tell them who brought bad luck to their ship. There! The lots point to the man who brought us bad luck. <gasps> it's Jonah! Where did you come from? And who are your people? I am an Israelite, and I worship the God of heaven. I'm running away from him. And he has found you. Jonah, what can we do? How do we make the storm go away? Throw me overboard. You must save yourselves. Please, Captain. We have no choice. We must throw Jonah into the sea. His god is more powerful than any of our gods. Jonah, I'm sorry. We've done everything we could do. I know, Captain. It's not your fault. I made God angry. It's me, not you, who should be punished. God of the Israelites, we're sorry for having to throw Jonah into the sea. <laughs> Poor 
Jonah. May your God forgive you, Jonah. Jonah found himself in the whale's belly. Now he was really alone. God, I'm sorry for trying to hide from you. Do you hear me, God? Jonah prayed to God for three days and three nights. It's so dark inside this well And I'm lost at the bottom of the sea I was a fool to run from you Now I know just what you want from me In the belly of a whale One day has gone by I promise to be true And all you ask I'll do In the belly of a whale Oh please hear my cry Never will I hide Your word will be my guide From the belly of a whale What can I do to thank you Lord What offer can After that, Jonah was no longer alone. Hello, Jonah. Oh, God. I'm so glad that you're here with me. You, you tried, tried to hide, hide from me. Oh, yes. And I now know that was really, really wrong. Jonah, you have learned your lesson. Come on, let's get you out of here. Jonah, Nineveh is behind that hill. Hurry, go tell them about me and about my love. God, I'm ready to do it now. So Jonah went to Nineveh. And what he had to say was so wonderful. All of the people listened. They believed, and best of all, they changed. God says we shouldn't steal from each other. We are all brothers and sisters in this world. Would you steal from your own family? God says we shouldn't hurt anyone weaker than us. Since we are all God's children, we should protect each other. Children, stop. 
God says we should honor our elders. Don't forget, they helped raise us and looked after us. Even the children were changed, and they gathered around Jonah, just like sheep around their shepherd. Hey, farmer, God says we all have jobs to do, and we should work hard. We should listen to him, since he's the one who gave this wonderful world to us. O oh, king of the Ninevites, this is no way to lead your people. God tells us to care for one another. Ha! Why should I care what your God thinks? Because he is going to punish everyone in this city for being bad. Nineveh will be like this grape. Please believe me, king of the Ninevites. I was sent by the one and the only God. You only have a few days. I do believe you, Jonah. Then know his love and obey his laws. That's all he wants. Jonah told the king all about God's laws. My people, people of Nineveh, hear me. For one week, all of us must fast. No one will eat anything for seven days, and all of us will wear rags. If we do this, we will show Jonah's God how sorry we are for acting so badly. After Jonah told the Ninevites about God and his laws, they changed their ways. Jonah then left the city. He sat on a hill above Nineveh to watch God punish them. Jonah, I'm proud of you. The Ninevites have changed their ways. But aren't you still going to punish them? I am not going to punish anyone, Jonah. But God, they are such bad people. Shouldn't they be punished? They have heard my voice through you, Jonah, and have changed their hearts. I love them as I love the Israelites, as I love all people. I was afraid of this. I saved the enemies of my people. Go home, Jonah. It will be okay. No, wait! Please, God. I am more confused than ever. Jonah didn't know what to do, where to go. He just started walking into the desert. Unfortunately, the desert was hot and he didn't have any food. I'm so tired. Hungry and thirsty. Thank you, God. Thank you for this plant and for saving me. The next morning, the plant was dead, and Jonah was mad. He was mad because God let a worm destroy the plant. Jonah. Why are you angry? You let this wonderful plant die that gave me food and shelter, like you took away my hope yesterday when you didn't punish the Ninevites. You're mad because the plant is dead. You cared more about this small plant than the whole city of Nineveh, but you didn't do anything to keep it alive. So? How do you think I'd feel if I punished all the people of Nineveh? There are men, women, and children that I made and cared for over many years. They never knew or loved me until you came. Shouldn't I still care about them? Yes. Yes, you should. Go home and tell your friends about Nineveh and the plant. So Jonah went home. I can't wait to see my friends and eat all my favorite foods. Except for one food. <laughs> it's going to be a long time before I eat fish again. Jonah was accepted back by his friends, and he spent the rest of his life teaching about God's laws, and especially about God's love.
many, many years ago in the land of Israel, the people were waiting for a very important event. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. They heard the old story that one day God was going to send them a new king, a king who would protect them, bring them peace, and give the people more freedom. When is the new king going to come anyway? Our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents promised he would. They said he was coming. Yeah, but when? Even in King Herod's palace, people waited. Faster, faster! <laughs> when will that new and better king get here? What was that? Nothing. No talking aloud. You will eat only bread and water for the next 30 days. No, 50 days. Oh. Old stale bread. Oh. And only four drops of water. No, make that three drops of water a day. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> then, one day, in the town of Nazareth, a young woman named Mary had a most amazing visitor, an angel. <laughs> Who are you? Please don't be afraid, Mary. I am the angel Gabriel. I've come to bring good news. News? For me? God has chosen you from all the women of the world to be the mother of His Son. God has chosen me? How can this be? Everything is possible with God. You will have a son. He will be the Son of God. And you will call the baby Jesus. Whatever God wants, I will do. Oh. Mary loved a man named Joseph. One night, an angel came to Joseph in his dream. Joseph. God has great and wonderful plans for you and Mary. Mary is going to have God's son. He will be God's promised king. Give him the name of Jesus and take good care of Mary and the baby king when he comes. Mary. My Mary. God sent an angel to tell me about the child. I love you, Mary. I love you too, Joseph. Soon after, Mary and Joseph were married. It was right about at this time that Augustus Caesar, the emperor of the whole Roman Empire, wanted to count the people who lived under his rule. 25, 26, 27, there are 692 people from the town of Hebron and 839 from the town of Jericho. Add it to the list. 28, 29, 30. I'm getting tired. Send servants out to count all the people in my land. Everyone was ordered to go to their hometown so they could be counted. Joseph had to take Mary to Bethlehem, the town where he was from. Bethlehem was very far away. Excuse me, Shepherd. Do you know how far Bethlehem is? It's a long trip. Seventy miles from here. Don't worry, Mary. I won't. I feel very safe with you, Joseph. For you see, Mary was expecting the new baby to arrive soon. Thank you, Shepherd. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. By day, they traveled many miles. We're more than halfway there. I'm sure we'll be there in no time. Here, Mary. It's nice and cool. Thanks. I'm so thirsty. <laughs>
At night, they slept in the open air. <laughs> ah. The next afternoon, they saw a sign. Bethlehem was only three miles away. We're almost there. Soon we'll be in a comfortable room at the inn. There were many travelers in Bethlehem that night. Where can I get a good meal? Where's the inn? Where's a good place to stay? Good evening, kind man. Can you tell us how to get to the inn? Of course. Why not take the shortcut? Just go around this corner, then up the steep hill. You'll pass the granary, then go right, then left, then two rights, then your second left, then let's see. Right, left, right, left, and you're there. Thank you. You're welcome. Huh? Excuse me, do you know where the inn is? Sure, it's right at the end of this street. It is? That's wonderful. Thank you, little girl. You're welcome. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. It was closer than we thought. We're here. Yes? Quit pushing. I'd like a room for my wife and myself. So would everyone. We have too many people here now. My husband keeps saying, yes, yes, yes. Tonight, we'll have to sleep in the kitchen. But we've been traveling for days. What's going on here? They want a room. What else? Uh, I'm sorry. We really have no more space at all. My wife is very tired. We came from very far away. Yes, so have a lot of people. And my wife is expecting a baby. I'll tell you what I can do. We have a stable out back. It's full of animals, but at least you'll have a roof over your heads. It'll be warmer and safer than sleeping out in the open. Thank you. You're very kind. Come, I'll show you. You have some important company. <laughs> I hope you'll be comfortable here. It's the best I can do. Thank you. We're very grateful. Let's try and make the best of it. During that night, a most wonderful thing happened. The baby was born, God's little son. We'll call the baby Jesus. Mary and Joseph loved their new baby boy very much. I must wrap him to keep him warm and comfortable. The ox's feeding box. Jesus can sleep in here. And so the baby Jesus lay in a manger, surrounded by the warmth of love and the protection of God, who was now ready to let all of heaven spread the news of the baby's birth. That night, just outside the town of Bethlehem, shepherds were watching their sheep. How can you let your sheep walk around all night? He should be sleeping. My sheep? That one is yours. You make him go to sleep. I'm not going to walk way over there. You take care of him. No, you. No, you! Look, it's no big deal. You just have to be nice to him, that's all. What do you mean? Just tell him to go to sleep. Hey, sheep! Go to sleep! 
Come over here, little guy. It's time to sleep. Come here, this way. Oh. Greetings. Oh. 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 Don't be afraid, shepherds. I bring good news of great joy. Tonight, a most wondrous thing has happened. Here in Bethlehem, the Son of God was born. He is Christ the Lord, the King that comes from God. His name is Jesus, and he is wrapped snugly in a manger. A manger? You can go see him right now. It is the happiest time of the world. Whoa! Wow. Ow! A king in a manger? Right here in Bethlehem? I always thought he'd be in a palace. Let's go into town and see what the angel's talking about. Uh, let's go into town and see what the angel is talking about. I just said that. Then let's go. Whoa! Whoa. This way. Hey, where are you going? Get back with the other sheep. Didn't I tell you to go back? All right, but you'd better behave. Sheep. The angel was right. Look. He's really there. Hello there. What brings you here? We came to see the baby sent from God. We know about him because an angel came and told us. Then many angels came and sang about God's glory and peace on earth. The angel said he'd be wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Just like this. It's true. What the angel said is true. The Son of God, the King in a manger. Mary's heart filled with wonder as the shepherds told their story. She knew that her newborn child was the Son of God. Meanwhile, in the far distant lands of the East, wise men who study the stars mm -hmm. saw something new in the sky. Oh. Mm. Oh, oh, my. I beg your pardon. Not at all. It was entirely my fault. Uh, no, it was me, really. I wasn't looking where I was going. I was noticing that star. But so was I. What a coincidence. I was, too. Uh, I study the stars. But so do I. Uh, so do I. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. I am from the Far East. Ah, I am from the Near East. I am from the Mid East. Have you ever been to the furthest East? Yoo-hoo! Wise men! <laughs> Down here! <laughs> you fellas wouldn't by any chance happen to know where that big fat star came from. This was just what we were wondering. We've never seen that star before. It's a completely new star. Unless... Unless... The star is a sign from God. Of course! Oh, my! A sign, a sign from, God. from God? That has to be it! The star is a sign from God? <laughs> yes, I see. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> what are you talking about? You see, it is said that a new and bright star would be seen in the sky when the new king is born. Really? But there it is, the new and bright star. It's also said that if we follow that star, It'll lead us to the new king. A new king! He's come at last! A star is a sign! So, are you going to follow it? Absolutely. Positively. Certainly.
We're gonna follow that star as long as it takes, no matter how far. Guiding us on to the child, the chosen one. Starlight, star bright, glimmer of hope, glorious sight. Shine on, shine on into the night. Lead us to our dream, the newborn king. Oh, yeah. What will we see? A palace of gold, royalty. Maybe he'll shine just like the star. wise men and bring us the news. So the wise men traveled far from the east. They kept following the star, never taking their eyes off it, not knowing where it would lead them. Look, the star is over Israel. We should go to the king's palace in Jerusalem. The newborn king must be there. Please forgive me, Your Majesty. I am so sorry to wake you, but the most unusual thing has happened. Tell me what it is already. And it better be good or I'll have you locked up. Yes, of course, Your Majesty. It's just that there are wise men visiting from the East. Yes, yes, and? Well, they say they have come to see the King. So, send them in. <laughs> they say they've come to see the newborn King. What are they talking about? Do they think I was born yesterday? Perhaps they were thinking there was another king. Another king? Absurd. Ridiculous. How can there be another king? And if there is someone pretending to be a king, I want to know where he is. He'll be sorry, I'll tell you that. Yes, Your Majesty, of course, Your Majesty. But what shall I tell the wise men from the East? Tell them to get lost. No. On second thought, get my advisors and hurry. Advisors! Advisors! Get in here! Yes, Your Majesty? What do you know about this newborn king? Oh, has he been born? Has who been born? The king. I am the king! We mean the other one. What other one? The one you speak of. The one I speak of? I don't know anything about any king, except that everyone else seems to know about him. Why wasn't I told? Nobody tells me a thing. But we didn't know he was born yet. Who? The newborn king. <sighs> okay, if you're so smart, just where is this newborn king? 
The old stories say he will be born in Bethlehem. The stories say that, do they? That'll be all. Send these wise men in at once. Who told you to stop? Keep those fans going. And the rest of you, get back to work. Your Majesty, I present the wise men from the East. King Herod, we have come to meet the newborn king. And where did you hear of this king? We saw the star that God put in the sky. A star? From God? A beautiful star. A bright star. A sign from God. <laughs> we knew that if we followed the star, it would lead us to the new king. We want to worship him. This new king is not here. Then where is he? He's in Bethlehem. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe you should go find him. Yes, see what I care. Go try and find him. And if you do find him, come and tell me where he is. I would like to worship the new king myself. Enough of that! When the wise men left the palace, they looked into the sky and saw the star once again. Look! There it is! On to Bethlehem! The wise men followed the star right into Bethlehem. Up this way. Come on, everyone. Come see the newborn king. And there, right above the manger, was the star. The wise men knew they had been guided to the right place. We've traveled from distant lands to celebrate the newborn king. May we come in? Please. We knew the baby was born because of the star. We followed it all the way here. We have brought gifts. The wise men gave Jesus gold and sweet-smelling perfume and incense. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for letting us worship the king. We thank God for his great wisdom. He has sent us his son. Praise be to God. Hooray for the new king. Praise be to God. Hooray for the new king. The wise men never did go back to King Herod to tell him the good news about baby Jesus. Everyone rejoiced and thanked God for sending them his son, the new king of the world. It was a very sad day when the king of Babylon surrounded Jerusalem with his army. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. Attack! The king and his army stole things that belonged to God. Then they destroyed his temple. The king then ordered that the stolen things be taken back to Babylon. But that was not all he stole. Ashpenaz, take the brightest young men in Jerusalem. They must be very healthy and very smart, so they can work for me in my palace. Don't touch those. They are from the temple. They belong to God. Take everything back to our kingdom. So the holy cups and plates belonging to God and Jerusalem's finest young men were carried hundreds of miles away to Babylon.
Among those taken were Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And even though Daniel and his three friends were hundreds of miles away from their home and the house of God, they stayed loyal to God. Are you studying hard? This is impossible. We'll never learn to read and write your language. God was with Daniel and his friends. Your language is very interesting, Your Majesty. Teach us more. God gave them more wisdom than the other young students, and they loved him for it. In time, the king saw how the boys were ten times smarter than all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon. And God gave Daniel something special, the ability to know and understand dreams. It was a good thing, too. King Nebuchadnezzar began having a strange dream. Arioch! a dream that kept him up night after night. Bring me my best magician, wizard and wise man. They must tell me what this dream means. Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, O oh king. Sleep, sleep. I've got to get my sleep. O oh king, live forever. What do you want to know? Ask any question. We have all the answers. Thank the gods. I have a most important question for you, magician, wizard, and wise man. No, he's the wizard. He's the wise man. He's the magician, O king. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Do you want to know what is colder? Snow? Or a dog's nose? Or how to turn goat's milk into cloth? Or the number of giants living inside the earth? No, no, no! I have been having a very strange dream night after night. That's simple. Piece of cake. No problem. So tell me what it means. Okay, but tell us what your dream was. Then we'll tell you what it means. Oh, no. If you are so smart, first tell me what I dreamed, then tell me what it means. You want us to tell you what you already know? Then tell you what you don't know? But you'll know if we know what you already know? Yes, yes, yes. I knew you were smart. Are you kidding? No way. Forget it. Tell me what I dreamed right now, or, or I'll punish all of you. But no one on Earth can do such a thing. Only the gods can tell you that. And they don't live on Earth. That's it. Now I'm mad. I'll not only punish the three of you, but... But... Ariok! Get rid of all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon! Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, O king. Arioch went to Daniel's house. He told him about the king's order to punish every wise man in Babylon. Wait, Arioch. Please, don't harm anyone tonight. Daniel, you're my friend. I'll wait, but only until tomorrow morning. Let's pray, my friends. God must help us understand the king's secret dream. No one should be harmed over this. Wake up, Daniel. I've come to explain the king's secret dream to you. Thank you, God. Oh, king, there's someone here to tell you what your dream means. Impossible. Who could be smarter than my wizard, magician, and wise man? One of the captives from Judah. You can tell me about my dream? No, not I. Is this some joke, Arioch? But... God in heaven can explain 
all secret things. I know what your dream means I know what your dream means God has told me to pass the word About what I've seen and what I've heard It's a simple message, sir With a truly holy theme Oh, I know what your dream means Nebuchadnezzar, believe me, it's my pleasure to come here to you and shed some light. I've been praying to God and this may sound awfully odd, but I understand the dream you had last night. Saw a statue with a head of gold, he was bronze and iron with big clay toes, symbolize the kingdoms of this earth. The golden face that I saw shining means down here you're the number one king. I'm giving you the facts for all their worth. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. Now the rock that rolled on down and brought the statue to the ground shows that earthly kingdom soon will pass. Yeah, the interpretation is that out of all the nations, God's is the kingdom that will last. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I've heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy thing. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me, King, what your Exactly right. You are smarter than all of my wizards, magicians, and wise men put together. Not me, sire. God told me this secret, not because I'm greater than anyone else, but so you can know what it means. But what does it mean? You're king for now, but neither you nor your kingdom will last forever. But God's kingdom will last forever. Your God is the God of gods the king of all kings. Your God tells people things they can't possibly know. You deserve a reward. From this moment on, you will rule over Babylon for me and be in charge of all my wise men. Oh, king, I beg you, do not punish them. Of course, anything you ask. Uh, what was your name again? Daniel, if I am to rule, I need help. I have three wise friends. Make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego leaders of Babylon as well. It shall be done, Daniel. Many years passed, and after King Nebuchadnezzar left the throne, his son, Belshazzar, became king. Daniel stayed in Babylon, and every day, three times a day, he faced Jerusalem and prayed to God. After so many years, Daniel was completely forgotten by the new king, Belshazzar. One night, King Belshazzar had a big party. The foolish king used cups and plates stolen from the house of God. 
Is everyone having fun? <laughs> By drinking from the stolen cups, he dishonored God. He only believed in false gods made from gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. <laughs> well, let us thank the gods for this wonderful party! <laughs> Wizards, magicians, wise men, come here, quickly! What does it say? Read it to me. Many, meeny, tickle person. Many, meeny, tickle person. Tell you what, anyone who can read those words uh, gets a gold chain! Eeny, meeny, tackle parsnip. Eeny, meeny, tackle parsnip. Eeny, meeny, tackle parsnip. How about this? A fine purple robe fit for a king. I'll even make you third highest ruler in my kingdom. Impossible. Infeasible. Inconceivable. Is there no one in my kingdom who can read these strange words? I know of someone, my son. Tell me, mother, who, who is it? In the days of your father, this man had wisdom like the gods. Call for Daniel. Are you Daniel? The one who believes in the god who created heaven and earth? Look, the gold chain, the purple robe, and third highest ruler in the kingdom. Everything is yours if you can read these words. King Belshazzar, keep your gifts or give them to someone else. Oh, then you can't read it either. But I can, and I will tell you what it says. Your father was so proud and stubborn he lost his kingdom. God rules over everything on earth, and he decides who will be king. You know all this but you aren't sorry for the terrible things you've done. Tonight, you used cups and plates stolen from his temple. You have dishonored God. God himself sent the hand that wrote these words, Mene. God has counted the days until your kingdom will end. To Kael, you are not good enough to be king any longer. Ufarsin, your kingdom will be given to some other people. Daniel, I know you speak the truth. King Belshazzar kept his promise and gave Daniel the purple robes and golden chain and made him the third highest ruler in the land. What Daniel said did come true that very night. Another ruler, King Darius, took over the kingdom. The new king picked three men to rule the kingdom. And since God had made Daniel very wise, Daniel was one of the three. Soon, King Darius saw how Daniel was better than the other two men, and he planned to make Daniel the one and only ruler of the land. That made the other two men very angry. The two mean wise men wanted to make Daniel look bad. But he always told the truth and was not lazy nor dishonest. 
We must make Daniel look bad. But how? He is just too good. I have an idea. Daniel really, really believes in his God. We will <laughs> use that against him. <laughs> It's me, God, Daniel. I was right. Daniel faces Jerusalem and prays to his God three times a day. This plan will work. I can't wait to tell the king. Hey, it's my plan. I'll tell the king. Not if I get to him first. Why, you? Theirs was a terrible plan, a plan to get rid of Daniel. Oh, King Darius, you have many enemies. And we know how to find them. For 30 days, let's have a holiday throughout the kingdom. For 30 days, no one can pray to any god or any human except to you. Hmm, I kind of like the sound of that. But here's the best part. If they don't pray to you, they must be your enemy. So we throw them into the, the lion's den. den. By the gods, uh, I mean by me, I like it. A holiday for 30 days. Yes, a great holiday. A feast like no other. I must tell Daniel. It's a wonderful new law. Daniel heard about the new law, but he was still loyal to God. He's breaking the king's new law. My plan worked. Daniel is praying to his God. Let's throw him into the lion's den. Wait, that wasn't your plan. It was my plan. It was not. I'm much wiser than you. Oh, King Darius, we found someone who doesn't obey your new law. Unbelievable! Who is this terrible person? He is the Israelite, Daniel. No, not him. He prays three times a day to his God, just as he did before you made the law. <laughs> Shall it be two lions or three? I can't hurt Daniel. He's a trusted advisor, and more importantly, my friend. But King Darius, as you know... The law says, no law given by the king can be changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right, that's right. All right. <sighs> Take Daniel to the lion's den, my dear friend. What have I done? I'm sorry, Daniel. I don't want to do this. You have always been loyal to your God. Maybe he will save you from the lions. Don't worry. I won't be alone down there. So that no one would move the stone and let Daniel out of the den, 
King Darius sealed the opening with his royal seal. King Darius could not sleep that night. He was very worried about his friend. The next morning, King Darius ran to the lion's den. Oh, Daniel, has your God kept you safe? Open the lion's den! But there was nothing to fear. <laughs> You're up early, King Darius. Daniel was safe and sound. I can't believe my eyes. You're okay. When the lions attacked, God saved me. He sent an angel to close their mouths. The lions didn't hurt me because God knew I hadn't done anything wrong. And I haven't done anything wrong to you, O oh King. Daniel, I'm so happy. And you call yourselves wise men? Take them away. That was a terrible plan. Don't look at me, it was your big idea. Was not, was too. King Darius wrote a letter to everyone in the world. Peace and happiness to all. From now on, all of you will respect the God of Daniel. He is greater than any other God because he uses miracles to rescue and save people. Daniel continued working for King Darius and always stayed loyal to God. And God blessed him for the rest of his life. <laughs>